Sought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. 
For when I am weak, then I am strong. So again, this is coming from 2 Corinthians. This is written by Paul during the time when there were false, false apostles that crept into the Corinthian church and they were attacking his credibility as an apostle. Mm -hmm. The believers there in Corinth were acting in a fleshly manner. You know, they were convinced that Paul was a fraud. You know, he didn't mm -hmm. charge them nothing to preach. That's right, that's right. He wasn't this great order. He wasn't mm -hmm. a big, impressive guy. So they looked at him like, okay, are you really an apostle? Because these people that came in here, look how well they're dressed. That's right, that's right. Look how they slap us around. They, mm -hmm. you know, they make us, they make us do. Mm -hmm. And you, you just write letters. You know, mm -hmm. you're, we see you kind of meek. So he was dealing with that. Now he had, had a vision of heaven. And you notice know, he, he didn't name himself as having a vision because he didn't want to get into a, a spirituality contest with those uh, false apostles because that would be easy to do. And again, the Corinthian church, those people were, they were Christians, but they were kind of young and they were fleshly. So stuff like that impressed them. Right. And when, it, when something like that impresses people, you don't want to be leaning in that too much. That's right. Because now they're they're not listening to what you're saying; they're listening to the story you're telling. Mm -hmm. And now, because you got a better story than this one, mm -hmm. then you must be the real deal. Right. And that's not that's not true. That's right. Uh, you have a whole whole lot of false apostles out there today, and a that's bunch right. of false prophets. So just because they can tell a good story doesn't mean it's the truth. And so Paul didn't want to get into let me tell you about my vision. You know, mm -hmm. they're telling you all about theirs and all the great stuff, things they've done. Let me tell you what God did for me. Mm -hmm. No, I'll tell you, but I'm not going to say it was me. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want you comparing them to me or me to them. Mm -hmm. That's not healthy for anybody. So that's kind of the background of what we're seeing here. So I'm going to start in verse 7. And it says, And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations that there was given me a thorn in the flesh, the message of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. It says right there, Paul was given this thorn in the flesh. And he was given that thorn in the flesh for a reason. Paul, God didn't want Paul to get puffed up. Because y'all see it every day. People get a vision, they get a word from the Lord or whatever. Now I'm the prophet. Mm -hmm. And now I'm, I, I just operate in prophetic gifts and everything I say is prophetic. And it's not. Sometimes it's just what you say. Sometimes it's just what you think. You had an impression. You know, somebody planted an idea in your head and you spoke it forth. That doesn't mean mm -hmm. that you're special. So Paul was sent that message in the flesh. We don't, in the, we don't, the message of Satan was thrown in the flesh. We don't know if it was a physical thing. We don't know if there's something spiritual going on. Nobody's ever been able to figure that out. But that's not really the point. The point is that Paul said that that messenger was sent to buffet him. Now, we see that word buffet. You got to understand what that word buffet means. And it's key to understanding the verse. Mm -hmm. Buffet means he's getting hit hard. It's a blow. It, it's, it's defined as a blow as with the hand or a fist. So God wasn't sending Paul a love tap. It That's wasn't, right. you know, it wasn't a, oh, how you doing today? No, That's it right. was, he was being punched around and knocked around and it hurt. Whatever was going on was really causing him some problems. So Paul's getting pounded by the storm mm -hmm. of the flesh. So what does Paul do? Verse 8 says, For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. Paul went to the Lord three times. He went to the Lord. He prayed about it. Didn't get an answer. Well, he thought he was supposed to get. So he went back. Didn't get an answer he thought he was supposed to get. Or he wanted to get. And he went back again. Mm -hmm. So, and you see it says, I besought the Lord. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you're beseeching. Yeah. This ain't some milk toast prayer. Oh Lord, right, you really. if you'll just do this for me, <laughs> I'll be all. No, it's yeah. not that. Mm -hmm. When you beseech the Lord, you are crying out, Lord, help yeah. me. Mm -hmm. What's going on here? Can you do something That's about right. this? Mm -hmm. I need some help here. Whatever, whatever's going on, Lord, make it stop. Yeah. Paul didn't go and beseech him once. Mm -hmm. He went yeah. beseeching him three times. Mm -hmm. He was asking, in the NKJV, it says, I pleaded with the Lord. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just, oh, I'm going to ask once, you know, yeah, Lord, after right. once, and the Lord didn't say nothing. Mm -hmm. I don't think he wants to heal me. No, like, Lord, please heal me. Mm -hmm. Lord, I don't know what's going on. Can you please heal me? Yeah. I know you hear me. Can you please hear me? Uh -huh. can, you, can, you, can you do something about this? And uh -huh. then it's again, 
Lord, can you do something about this? Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like some milk toast prayer. Oh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to all be okay. And I'm going to ask right. once. That's no. right. Paul did what the scripture tells us to do. Mm -hmm. He went and he prayed mm -hmm. and he continued to pray. That's right. And we know in James 5, 16, it says the righteous, the, the uh, effectual perfect prayer of a righteous man of Bella Hill. Yeah. And Paul prayed without ceasing. He That's didn't right. stop. He didn't pray once and right. quit. Right. So he did what the word tells us mm -hmm. to do. But you look at it, it's like, okay, well, we know we can be pretty sure that Paul was a righteous man. And the mm -hmm. word says that the the fervent prayer of a righteous man availed, but it wasn't available to Paul, it didn't seem like. Mm -hmm. And the word says you got to go and pray without ceasing. So Paul kept praying and it wasn't working <laughs> or it didn't seem like it was working. Right. So does that mean that God was abandoning Paul? Some would say God let Paul down. That God wasn't listening. That he wasn't that he wasn't there in Paul's moment of need. Mm -hmm. But as Paul would look, would, as known to say, God forbid, because mm -hmm. God wasn't being cruel. To that's Paul. right. That's right. God wasn't forgetting about him. He wasn't ignoring him. Mm -hmm. God was listening. Yes, he was. But in verse nine it says, "And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Amen. Most gladly, therefore, will I glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ." They rest upon me. Mm -hmm. Now, when I was doing my getting this sermon together, mm -hmm. I was reading out of a, a commentary by David Guzik, and he has a passage in there that kind of explains this particular verse. Mm -hmm. And I want to read it because I think it says it better than I could. And what it says is, quote, Paul was desperate in his desire to find relief from this burden. Mm -hmm. But there are two ways of relief. It can come by removing the load or by strengthening the shoulder that bears the load. Mm -hmm. Instead of taking away the thorn, God strengthened Paul under it, and God would show his strength through Paul's apparent weakness. A lot of times when we go to the Lord, we want the Lord to take away. That's right. We think that the only way to be to be strengthened on this thing is, Lord, you got the strength, you take this away from us. Mm -hmm. That's right. But that's not the only way. Sometimes the Lord is just going to give you the strength to bear up under whatever that's you're, right. you're dealing with. And even in that, Paul had to believe. What Paul had to believe was that he was insufficient. When God says, when Jesus tells him, my grace is sufficient for thee, for thee, the only way you can process that and make that work for you is you have to understand that you are insufficient. That's the only way it works. Now, I asked God for prayer for my own personal situation. Mm -hmm. And it is a hard, hard thing. Mm -hmm. It's a crisis. Mm -hmm. And as I look at it, as I get a little bit further away from it, mm -hmm. I realize that the crisis is a crisis of my making. Mm -hmm. I can't blame nobody else. Mm -hmm. I can't point the finger at everybody else. I got to point the finger at me. I got to see what I did wrong, mm -hmm. and I got to acknowledge what I did wrong, mm -hmm. and hopefully, I'll get a chance to make those things mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. So, I'm at the end of me. Mm -hmm. I'm at the end of myself. All the stuff that I could do, mm -hmm. that I thought was so smart and so right, or I was unthinking in things that I did, mm -hmm. brought me right here. Mm -hmm. It brought me right here. Mm -hmm. Did nobody else do it? Mm -hmm. That was all there. That was all pride. Mm -hmm. Because I know better. Mm -hmm. I don't need to listen to that. Can't nobody tell me nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm an Edwards man. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. I'm an Edwards man. <laughs> and God knows <laughs> us Edwards men, <laughs> my brothers, we would get around and we would make mama so mad sometimes. Mm -hmm. Because we be all together, and she say, y'all think y'all know everything, though. I'm like, between the four of us, <laughs> we pretty much got it covered. All right, between the four of us, ain't much that we don't know. Huh? You know, we were joking, mm -hmm. but there was also that sense of pride. Because, yeah, we are some, we're some pretty, we're pretty sharp characters here. <laughs> we know some stuff. But when you build that pride up, even when you're joking about it, you can build that pride up and it can become part of it. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And as it becomes part of you, now when things start to go wrong, you don't you don't ever look at you. Right, right. So I can fix it. And then you're a man. Men is almost inborn in men that we can fix it. If something goes wrong, we can fix them. Mm -hmm. We don't need to talk about it. We can fix it. Right. It's gotta be a it's gotta be a list of instructions. We go through the instructions, get the right tools, bam, 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 we done. Yeah. Yeah. It's all great. I know it's not. Mm -hmm. So I've gotten myself to a bad, bad spot. And I have been beseeching the Lord to, mm -hmm. to Lord, fix this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Fix this. But as I got into this scripture, I realized maybe it's not to be fixed. I'm praying that it is. Yeah. Yeah. And it may not to be fixed today. That's right. It may be you got to bear up on this. Mm -hmm. And then right. we can fix this down the road. That's right. But the first part of bearing up on it is realizing that you are insufficient. That's right. That That's you right. don't have all the answers. That's right. That you got to come to me. Yes. And let me do it. And be willing to do it mm -hmm. the way I say. Mm -hmm. Not the way I want to do it. That's right. He I want everything to be way. good today. Yeah. But it's like, okay, yeah. this situation didn't happen in a day. That's right. That's right. Rome wasn't built in a day, and you ain't going to burn it all down in a day. That's right. And it ain't going to be rebuilt in a day. That's well, it takes some time for you to mess up. It's going to take some time for God to restore. Mm -hmm. Could he restore everything yes. instantaneously? Yes, he, he could. He could if he wanted to. But what would that teach me? What do I learn from that? <laughs> if it's just, okay, well, I dug this grave mm -hmm. and then God plucked me out of it. Yeah. Let me go dig another one. Mm -hmm. That would be the takeaway. Mm -hmm. Let me go dig me another grave right here because, hey, God will pull me out of, he'll pull me up out of the muck and the mire plate. Yes, he will. But quit stepping in the mud hole. That's right. That's right. Quit stepping in the mud hole. That's right. That's you gonna have to you gonna have to get out of this mud hole. It's gonna take you a while. This that's time. right. That's right. So I so I understand where Paul was coming from. He was beseeching the Lord. God knows I'm there. Mm -hmm. I'm there. But I know that what Jesus said to Paul applies to me, mm -hmm. and it applies to you and everybody else listening. His grace is sufficient for me. And in my weakness, his strength is made perfect. Yes. In my weakness, I can't fix this. That's right. In my weakness, the hole that I dug, I can't, I can't make that better. Mm -hmm. In myself, depending on myself caused this. Depending on myself is the reason I'm here. Listen to my own ideas and think that they're the best ones ever because I have them. Got me here. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all out there that's going through stuff, Y'all got y'all there. Mm -hmm. Don't be sitting around talking about what the other person did or how they did you that, that way, a white man that. No, you did. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to come to the realization that I've come to that when you mess up, you got to bear up on it. You got to own up to it. But That's the first right. thing you got to do is understand that God has enough strength to get you through. That's right. But you got to stop trying to rely on your own strength. That's you got to right. understand that you're weak. Mm -hmm. You don't have the power to do it. You're weak. It's not that God wants you to be weak forever because he will strengthen you. Yes, it But you got to start understanding whatever strength you have is not your strength. That's you're right. only strong That's in right. him. Come you're only strong through the Holy Spirit that he puts in you. And if you're yeah. going to try to, de to depend on you, you're going to find yourself in the same spot over and over and over and over and over and, over and one more time after that. Mm -hmm. Because your ideas aren't the best ideas. That's right. Your strength is weakness. So be strong enough to be weak in the Lord and let him work through you. Mm -hmm. Let him be your strength. Because okay, what he said, his grace is, is sufficient. The grace, see, we always want to look at grace as it's unmerited favor. And so when we say grace, we just think about we're going to get a blessing. No, grace is that strength to pick you up off the floor. And have you stand up and move on. That's grace. Grace is having somebody willing to tell you the truth about you. Mm -hmm. 
And when somebody's trying to tell you the truth about you, you might all listen. Mm -hmm. Even when it's uncomfortable. Because mm -hmm. that's when they're probably telling the most truth that you need to hear. If everybody's telling you how great you are, yeah, I want to hear that. That's all I'm, you know what I mean? I'm just going to be honest. I like to, I like people tell me how smart I am. But, you know, I, I love that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I've been dumb. I've been dumb. Mm -hmm. And I've been thinking that I have strength inside of me that I don't have. That I can handle all this by myself. That everything that goes on, I can fix it. If I can't fix it, I'm putting it in this little box and I'll fix it later. Now you got so many projects, you can't fix none of them. Mm -hmm. But God can fix them all. Mm -hmm. And he'll send people to you to help you fix them. He'll put you in situations where people are there to help you. That's right. Don't be so proud that you won't accept the help. Mm -hmm. Don't do that either. So I know that what I've got going through, what I'm going through right now, I, it may not look the greatest right now. It might take a while. Mm -hmm. But I know that I don't have to do it on my own. Mm -hmm. I know that I don't have the strength. And I know that his grace, mm -hmm. I believe his grace for me right now and for a lot of y'all right now is going to be, I'm going to strengthen you to bear the loads to bear, that you got to bear right now. Mm -hmm. And then once you can learn to bear that load, once you can learn to take responsibility, once you can learn to look to me for everything, now I can start taking this away. Mm -hmm. Now I can start repairing. That's now right. I can start That's fixing. Right. Now I can start restoring. But right. first, you got to let me strengthen you. Mm -hmm. And you got to go on in my strength. You got to bear right. up. That's right. That's because right. if you can't bear up, I can't just take this away because you'll get right back there. That's right. That's right. If I just take it away and make everything better, you just go right back to where you were because you, now you think, oh, daddy going to pull me out the fire every time. Yep. No, you're going to have to go through this fire. That's right. You might get seized a little bit, mm -hmm. but he ain't going to let you burn up. That's right. Amen. He will not He's not going to let you burn up. Hallelujah. But you're going to have to feel the fire that's and feel right. the heat of some of the stuff that you've done. Amen. And I'm, and I'm a living witness. I'm a living witness. Amen. Now, verse 10, it says, Therefore I, therefore I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and necessities and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Now, I ain't going to lie to you. I'm not quite as spiritually mature as Paul. <laughs> no who can either. say yeah. that I, I take pleasure in infirmities. I take pleasure in reproaches, oh, in being in need, and being persecuted, and being in distress. But there's a difference between me and Paul, though. Paul says, "I'll take, I'm, 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 I'll take all of this. I will enjoy all of this for Christ's sake." Me and a lot of folks out there, we going through infirmities and reproaches and necessities and persecutions. And distresses, not for Christ's sake, but for our own sake, mm -hmm. because we did it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We thought we had all the answers. Mm -hmm. We thought we knew what we was doing. Mm -hmm. So we caused all this chaos. Mm -hmm. So no, you ain't supposed to enjoy that. Mm -hmm. And I don't enjoy it. Mm -hmm. But I also know I whipped it up. I, mean, I made this meal, I put it on the plate, I'm like, mm -hmm. that's just how it is. Mm -hmm. So, and it would be something different if I was suffering for the sake of Christ, but I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> I'm suffering for the sake of Aaron. Right now. Yeah. I mean, it was Eric that did it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't Eric again, and it ain't for Jesus. You know, mm -hmm. Jesus ain't got nothing to do with what I did. If I'd been following him like I was supposed to, mm -hmm. I might not have done that stuff. Right. You know, I might have been, I wouldn't have been so prideful. I wouldn't have been so stubborn. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have been. If I'd have been doing what I was supposed to be doing, if I'd been right. following like I was supposed to follow. But I also realize that this word is still true, that when I'm weak, 
then I'm strong because when I'm weak, I can recognize that I don't have all the answers. I can recognize that I don't know it all. I can recognize that the only way for me to get through this is for Christ to take me through it. It's for the Holy Spirit to strengthen me and pick me up and walk me through the day. That's the only way I can do it. And so when I'm weak, I'm strong, but I'm not strong in me. And that's what a lot of people want to do. That's what, that's what I've done in the past. That's what people are doing today is they want to be strong in themselves. That's right. And they forget you got a whole Holy Spirit living inside of you. That's right. That's right. And he wants to give you strength. That's right. He wants to give you endurance. He wants to give you power. He wants to give you knowledge. He wants to lead you and guide you. And in Jesus' name, say he wants to te teach you all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But if you want to be, but if you want to be the one holding the reins, you're going to have some trouble. Mm -hmm. If you want to be the one that thinks that I'm strong, mm -hmm. like I'm not strong. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I didn't try it. I didn't try it. I tried it on more than one occasion. And every time I tried it, it has not worked out well for me. Mm -hmm. It's not worked out well for the people that I love. It's not worked out well for my family. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm done trying to be the spiritual superhero. <laughs> I'm done trying to be strong in myself. Mm -hmm. Because I don't have any righteousness within me that's mine that I can claim. Mm -hmm. I don't have any strength that's in me mm -hmm. that's mine that I can claim. Mm -hmm. The only strength that I have is the strength that God gives me. That's right. The only strength that I have that's worth anything is what the Holy Spirit does mm -hmm. in my life. Yes, How I walk through life mm -hmm. that keeps me upright, mm -hmm. that keeps me seeking Him, that's put people in my life and tell me the truth. Mm -hmm. I don't have that in me. I just don't. And if you're honest, you don't read <laughs> And that's not to say that you're some weakling and you're not this or you're not that. It's just to be honest. I want everybody, I don't want everybody to have to go through things that I've gone through and things that I've gone through. I don't want nobody to have to go through that to understand who God is. Mm -hmm. I don't want anybody else to have to go through that to understand where your strength actually comes from. Mm -hmm. Let me be an object lesson. Listen to what I'm saying, telling you today. You, we have a Savior mm -hmm. that came to earth mm -hmm. in the form of a man so he could be just like us. So he could feel what we feel and understand the temptations that we have mm -hmm. so that when he went on that cross and died for us, he could die in our place. And so that when he rose up and went to heaven and intercedes for us now, he can tell the Father exactly, I know exactly how he feels. Because mm -hmm. I felt it. Mm -hmm. I know exactly that pain because I felt it. We have the greatest high priest. And his name is Jesus. And if you don't know him, you need to get to know him That's today. Right. That's right. That's right. I'm good. Because when you know him, he will strengthen you. Yes, he will. Sometimes it may not feel like. When you get saved, don't go on feels. That's right. That's right. Because you ain't always going to feel like that's you're saved. Right. That's right. You ain't going to always that's feel right. like going to church. You ain't always going to feel like studying your Bible. Don't focus on your feelings. Know who Christ is for yourself. Mm -hmm. And then when you have those feelings, you can get through them because he will give you the strength to get through them. Because his grace is sufficient. That's right. What keeps me going? Is known that God's grace is sufficient for me. Amen. That I don't have to walk it out by myself. That's right. That I don't have to reach into some inner wellspring of strength and, <laughs> yeah. and pull myself up by my bootstraps and do it. I don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. I just have to be willing to be at the end of myself mm -hmm. and understand that His strength. Is my strength. Mm -hmm. And that his grace is sufficient. Mm -hmm. 
that it may not look the way I want it to look mm -hmm. or how I expect it, mm -hmm. but his grace is sufficient. His grace is sufficient for me. And like the word says, his grace is sufficient for me. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Good word. Amen. Amen. Good word. Amen. Amen. Good word, brother. Yes, it's word. Amen. Amen. At this time, I'm going to open the doors of the church. Amen. And uh, if anyone wants to uh, rededicate their life, 